today we're going to talk about Kerala, a state in the southwest of India. By the way, here's a picture of a boat trip in Kerala. A lot of tourists do this. If you'd like to see where Kerala is on a map, it's right down here, the light green state. The so-called Kerala paradox is that Kerala has been a relatively poor state of India, but it has social indicators which, in some important regards, are well in advance of much of the rest of India. Some of these social indicators are really quite good, even compared to parts of the developed world. Just to give a few examples, literacy in Kerala is measured at about 92%, compared to about 52% for the rest of India, and of course that's a large gap. If we look at infant mortality, it's about 17 out of 1,000 in Kerala, and in the rest of India it's a much higher 85 out of 1,000. Life expectancy for males in Kerala, it's about 68, in the rest of India it averages about 63. It's an even larger gap for females, where in Kerala it's 74, and the rest of India it's about 64, a full 10 years less. Finally, rates of fertility in Kerala are much lower. Measured per woman, we have here about 20 per 1,000, compared to the average for the rest of India being at about 31 per 1,000. What are the causes of this? Well, it's going to turn out to be a complex story, but right off the bat, one cause is that social development expenditures in Kerala are higher in general than in the rest of India. For instance, in Kerala, those expenditures are about one-third higher than a simple model of per capita income would predict. It also seems to be the case that people actually expect reasonable quality social services from their government. Still, we shouldn't focus on just public sector expenditures. For instance, in urban parts of Kerala, about 64% of health care expenditures are private, and in rural parts of Kerala, about 60% of health care expenditures are private. It's also interesting to look at the ratio of private to public spending on health care in Kerala. In Kerala, that ratio is about nine times, that is, much more private spending, for the rest of India, that ratio is about four times, so Kerala is showing an especially high preponderance of private spending on health care. This is an estimate taken from a paper by Arvind Panagaria. Another interesting feature of Kerala is just how many Keralans have migrated to the Gulf region to work, typically at higher salaries, and often stayed there for a while and then moved back home with a fairly high stash of wealth. In the earlier days of Indian independence, Kerala really was a less wealthy than average Indian state, but in more recent times it's actually become more wealthy than average, in part due to these remittances and due to labor moving, if only temporarily, to the Persian Gulf. Remittances from abroad account for about 20% of total income in Kerala, and that's not always counted in the statistics. Kerala now actually on average is one of the more prosperous states in India, and it's even more prosperous if we measure wealth by how much people actually consume rather than how much they earn. We find also in the data that asset ownership is at about two times typical Indian levels, which is again a reflection of Kerala having become more prosperous. So there is still a paradox in Kerala having to do with the level of social indicators compared to the wealth, but this older notion that Kerala, even for India, is especially poor hasn't been true for a while. If we look at geography and look back at history, we find some features of Kerala that probably contribute to its superior social indicators. For instance, in Kerala there is generally lots of rainfall. This means that the harvest is less vulnerable and it contributes to economic and social stability. It's also the case that the populations of Kerala tend to be quite accessible. This is because so frequently there is water everywhere, whether it's the coast or whether it is inland waterways. So the notion of there being people stuck in some distant interior, which is hard to reach with health care or social services, well, that's less the case in Kerala than in many other parts of India. And in general, there is so much of the state on the coast, coastal location, and there's so much water transport. Kerala is not a state which has a lot of major highways, but nonetheless it has an extensive road system, 
and has for a while, and this makes it a more unified state knit together with close relations of trade, and again the distribution of social services tends to be much easier. In general, in Kerala, the urban versus rural distinction is weaker than in many other parts of India. So the notion of having some very backward rural villages which are lagging far, far behind major cities, again, that's less likely to be the case in Kerala than many other parts of India. Kerala also has a history of linguistic homogeneity, and significant parts of Kerala have been a matrilineal society for centuries, and that may contribute to the superior record for social indicators when it comes to caring for women. Here's a picture of a tea plantation in Kerala. You can see that it's quite lush, and this is reflecting the notion that rainfall is relatively plentiful in Kerala compared to some other parts of India. There's a lot of evidence that the superior social indicators of Kerala are rooted fairly far back in history. For instance, if we look at since 1961, in Kerala, life expectancy has barely been growing at an above-average rate compared to the rest of India. In other words, the superior performance of the state with regard to life expectancy comes from factors which were probably present before 1961. Since 1961, literacy actually has been growing at a lower rate than in the rest of India. For Kerala, about 45%, and for the rest of India, it's gone up about 79%. This isn't saying that Kerala has done anything wrong since 1961. They had a higher literacy rate. That makes it harder to grow. But again, if we're looking to explain that higher literacy rate, we probably should look at some features of the state which predate 1961. In general, Kerala has had superior literacy indicators from the time of colonialism, or perhaps even earlier. Part of the paradox of Kerala is that when it comes to some social indicators, the state appears to have a much worse performance than many other parts of India. For instance, if we look at alcoholism, or consider rates of suicide, or rates of joblessness, and also inequality of income, in all of these areas, Kerala has subpar performance. It's very difficult to come up with a unified theory that explains these areas where Kerala, when it comes to other social indicators, simply isn't doing that well. Just to close, here's another very nice picture of Kerala. Again, this is a picture of a boat trip. To follow up on Kerala, you can do some simple googling, such as Kerala Social Indicators and Kerala Paradox, but here's some pieces which I found especially useful in trying to make sense of the history of Kerala. Uh, most of them are online, except for this one book, Social Development in Kerala, but in any case, these are just some suggestions to get you started. In any case, it still seems there is really quite a bit about the Kerala Paradox, which we still don't understand.